I'm gonna do, um, well, I'm gonna go back, we'll go into the link, of course, as you guys come in and post something in the comments. So give me a second. How are you guys doing? <clears throat> we are here with the eclipse aftermath, I should say, or the rolling of the eclipse. The rolling of the eclipse, it doesn't stop. Um, we had this uh, very special eclipse here, 100% uh, <clears throat> complete. And um, it's what one of those one of those eclipses that happen every or once every five thousand years, I believe. So it was a big one, um, a big one. So I don't know what you guys were doing, uh, <clears throat> but I hope you guys, you know. Well, we're gonna get into that conversation today. Like what, at least from my perspective, of course. Um, on what that energy may entail. So give me one second, guys. Before I go ahead and, of course, um, just getting this out the way, pinning that message. Cool, it is pinned. All right. Now I can say hello officially. Hey, it's so weird not having my headphones, so I have to like block out any noises that are going on around me, but I know you guys can hear me fine. Uh, hey. So yes, happy um, Eclipse Aftermath. <laughs> and there's just a interesting perspective that I do have on um, the whole celestial event. And I do want to express that today course somebody said what's the tea on this what's the spirits where's the liquor you know I told you guys it's like a bar it's not necessarily tea time it's it's bar time on my channel <laughs> no coffee no tea <laughs> or some a little sip of tea but not necessarily to the full capacity you know this is the bar <laughs> um, so this is like the raw spirit uh <laughs> mixed up and placed into crazy cocktails and shit um and shots <laughs> but um <clears throat> yeah but anyway before i get started of course as always hello and i just want to thank everyone who constantly contributes um to the messages that uh that you hear um every time i come on here so of course um, in the description box and in the pinned comment um, in the chat box you can see my cash app information my venmo my paypal and of course my link to my website called sentientnumerology.com uh, where i actually do personalized readings um mo mostly going into the numbers and just going on from that point of view um, very thorough readings. Um, I've been enjoying the readings that I've been doing with you guys lately. Um, so I may have time to do a couple of readings today, um, actually after the conversation. Um, but either way, any contributions or contributions to um, donations are always welcome. You can always put your birthday um, in like the cash app or whatever donation you put in just place your birthday in there and i will see if i can get to your uh reading um i'll make sure that i make note of it so we'll get into that um but now let's talk about uh this past eclipse now i have not heard anything about or i haven't heard anyone speak on it so i don't know what the tea is out there about the eclipse um, this is all basically me living under a rock <laughs> from these conversations and I just go based upon um, just what I feel um, you know so it, you might not hear this <laughs> from uh, some, from someone else um, but first off the fact that the eclipse was on April 8th right which is a 4-8 and we're gonna get into the numbers um, I believe that was a Monday on a 4-8 um, this was a heavy hitter. It was definitely a Saturnalian eclipse. Um, basically, uh, a clarity of the eye point of view. 
the middle eye <laughs> point of view. Um, let's just say that, and it's funny because I have like a little Egyptian theme going on today with the makeup and the hair, but um, uh, one part of the eye would represent the sun, the other part of the other eye would represent the moon, and the true eclipse that this actually represented, uh, which is a very ancient, um, energized, celestial event, um, uh, the soul and the moon basically eclipsing each other true for true clarity. So the true eye of Ra. Um, again, I'm speaking in Egyptian terms. I know that everyone doesn't necessarily follow that, but it's a, it's a good reference point for me. Um, but the eye of Ra was opened on Monday. <laughs> and that, um, that activation is kind of like a very apocalyptic um, call out or a, 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 an apocalyptic summons, I should say. Um, so, apocalyptic does not mean the smashing of the world, but it does mean the end and the true beginning of something very, very clear and very new. And I kind of like wrote down, you know, because I like playing around with anagrams and letters as well as numbers and looking at words in different ways. And I look, I, I wrote down the word eclipse and I kind of like put a circle around the E, move the E out of the way and just look, looked at the word clips or clip. And when you clip something, you're clipping something, you're cutting something off or you're clipping away something. Um, also, there's a, um, uh, a reference to clips when we're talking about <laughs> many things oh geez this shit just comes pouring in all right so there's clips um when we're talking about uh <laughs> let's just get straight to the guns all right so clips when you loading up a clip right for the guns I, I did not know that this was going to come out kind of like flashing into my face looking at the word through the anagram, but like the clips, man, the guns. So we got the clips, we got the clips, and um, we also just have, um, yeah, just cutting away or cutting off. So in order to do that, in order to cut something away, clip something out, even blast something out, you gotta have 100% access to the library of truth. Um, this is calling into the true realm of Ma'at. And it's interesting because I just happened to, no lies, no lies. Um, where I'm staying, there's actually a couple of doves um, in a cage. You know, we have like a couple of doves here. A few, well, three doves. One of these feathers just called out to me. And I'm always talking to the birds here. I'm always talking to the doves. I play the doves music. Um, I, I show them how to like simultaneously fly in the sky where they're while they're still in the cage. And it's kind of like I helped like awaken a certain point of view from their uh, from their sky connection. The thing about uh, birds that have not flown wild, um, birds that are in a cage can actually go through a depression because when they're outside and they actually recognize the signature of the wing flapping, even if they can't see the other birds. Um, when they recognize the, the, the signature of the bird flapping and they do happen to see the birds flying outside of their cage, there's a deep depression that can happen to the actual beings that are inside of the cage. So when I sense that, I actually kind of like did some movement <laughs> with them and just kind of like, help them remember that they can actually join the birds in the sky and that's like a little ancient secret that you know it's just between nature that kind of like recognizes that they can actually simultaneously be in a few different places at the same time and as i was going into my own thought space um before getting up on here on this video uh this found me from one of the doves so so as we talk about Ma'at, um, this is the symbol for Ma'at, for truth. Um, 
the goddess of truth, uh, of everything. It's, it's full wisdom. <laughs> um, it's the scales. And Ma'at is no joke. <laughs> All right? So uh, Ma'at has been summoned through this eclipse because it's been 100% access to full truth and full wisdom. So I'm going to stop there because that's a lot um, and just kind of take a breath. And kind of look in the comments and say hey to you guys for a second because there's a lot there's like a lot of still like aftermath energy yet again you look like an egyptian goddess oh thank you i feel like one i feel like one i really do um i'm kind of like channeling into like a cleopatra right now um a lot of people they go straight to nefertiti someone actually just mentioned nefertiti um i have a song called nefertiti uh you know i have like the tattoos and stuff but um i really went into like my cleopatra vibe um, and it's really been like crazy because the thing about Cleopatra's time is that she was really, really into beauty. She was really into sensuality and the femininity and the power of the true beauty of femininity as we've been talking about for these past few videos. Nefertiti was more so of a power house queen pharaoh. Um, her strength came from her power and authority um, she was also fighting a lot of wars within her own walls, um, within her own family, within her own arrangements. Nefertiti didn't really get to, um, she didn't really get to embody the true love goddess energy. Um, she always had to go into Isis mode, into that mode of um, solving problems. Uh, thank you, Isabella, for your Cash App donation. Oh, for the for the cage bird, still uh, birds still know how to fly. Thank you, Isabella. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, Nefertiti, she was more so into warrior goddess mode, and we all know, or some of us that are well versed in Egyptian um, traditions, uh, you have Sekhmet, which is the warrior goddess. It is the daughter. She is the daughter of Ra. Um, and she is sent off and summoned by Ra to go and kill and viciously kill anyone that is attacking truth, Ma'at. She protects the goddess of Ma'at. So she turns their blood into wine and she gets thirstily drunk off of their blood until there is no more. All right, she's a vicious goddess. Um, and that is the other half of Hathor. So Hathor is a two faced. Hathor and Segment are one goddess that are two faced. Um, so Cleopatra is definitely the other incarnation and in one of the kingdom queendoms within the um, royal, you know, setup that uh, that was able to actually really sit in her Hathor or Heteru <clears throat> goddess mode. Um, this is why she had the hair and the jewels and the makeup and. When you look back at Nefertiti, Nefertiti actually had, uh, and I just spoke to someone about this, had short hair. She was not, she did not wear wigs. She did not wear her long hair. Her hair was very short underneath the crown. And that crown represented almost like um, a covering up for a new religion, as you guys may be familiar with the, um, the dynasty of, uh, what is his name, um, Akhenaten. Nefertiti and Akhenaten, they were starting a new religion and she had to cover her hair. Whereas Cleopatra or the, a lot of the other queens, um, they did not have to do that. So Nefertiti was definitely singled out and she did not get a chance to experience a lot of what it meant to be a true incarnation and true daughter of a goddess in the kingdom or the dynasties. So that's just a little off track, side track conversation. Um, but, you know, I'm just sensing these things. I don't know, you know, the DNAs <laughs> and the neural pathways, they store all of this information. Um, and uh, I just kind of like flow with it. Uh, so um, going back to the eclipse, before I get back into the comment section, um, the co it's basically this eclipse was more so for cosmic clarity 
that forces all of the life down below because this is an as above celestial event. This is something that the gods indeed already um, futuristically gathered and meant to do. It's hard to explain because these ancient energies are futuristic. They're not from our past anymore. Um, I may do like a webinar. Is that an old word to use now? I don't know what people are doing nowadays, but like a specific um, class to actually like get into like the cycle talk. But um, there's like a, there's like a, um, uh, a point in the cycle where the ancient energies that we feel are the past are now in front of us based upon where we are in the cycle or the circle of life. So the ancients are actually in front of us. They're in the future. And they do very well in the future because this is where they become gods again. They're not the heavyweight of the past. Um, so they are no longer ancestral. So sometimes the energies that are very powerful you know, uh, they can switch off based upon cycles on whether it's coming from a point of the past, which is more ancestral. Ancestral energy is usually energies that are trying to stay afloat or keep a hold on to legacy until the cycle changes to where they can become more so in the seat of power. So when you're working as an ancestor, you have to still depend on, ooh, depend on the human form of your descendants to get the message and if your fucking family or your descendants do not get the message they don't hear your phone call as an ancestor they don't even acknowledge you as an ancestor you kind of like lose a lot of power because of that so then by the time the full cycle comes back around your godlike tendencies are kind of gone so um so we're in the cycle where a lot of our ancestors have graduated or went into the realm of God-like energy, goddess-like energy. So um, it's, it's, it's very interesting right now. So they're kind of like depending now from the opposite point of view on raining down, actually raining down the intention of the summoned cosmic meanings and making sure that the order of their legacies and families and descendants are actually following that order and trusting in higher power to make sure that they're good um that making sure that the war that we are indeed fighting that you are on that quote unquote right side of it for yourself um so there's a lot of that eclipse allowed that movement to happen freely and effortlessly for a lot of energies that were stuck in the ancestral realm to go and move over into the goddess realm or the god realm. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you guys like kind of rolling with that, um, but that's just my, my, uh, my perspective on that. And again, um, if you guys wanted any um, actual like perspectives, especially after this whole eclipse energy, um, especially the energy that I'm kind of sitting in right now. If you wanted to like get a quick reading on your numbers or numerical setup, um, any donation that you send um, with your birthday attached to the donation, um, I can go ahead and give you a quick reading um, <clears throat> and see what the energies kind of like say or how it responds to your birthday, to your numbers. Um, also, um, I'm kind of like looking at what I wrote, um, solar. So we're talking about solar and lunar energy. So I wrote the word solar down, solar eclipse, lunar eclipse. Um, solar is basically uh, the word of truth and effortlessness of the soul. When you flip the word around, I circled soul, S-O-L, flip the word A-R to R-A, you get the soul of Ra. So I'll, maybe I should like write this down, hold on, so that you guys can see it visually. Because it makes a big difference. Because I like, again, I like breaking things down 
and building things up, right? So give me a second. I'm gonna write this down. I hope I don't know if you guys are gonna see this backwards. Right? So this is the word solar. And when you flip R A around backwards or reverse, it is soul ra. Soul of Ra, right? So Ra comes out when Ra needs to come out. The soul of Ra. Um, when the soul of Ra comes out, that usually means that it's war time. Um, it's a war god. Um, it's, it's, it's like no joke. So basically this eclipse, um, as I've been saying uh, over the past few videos of the war that I am sensing, um, the cosmic war coming down and trickling down into the matrix, of course. Um, the the soul of Ra came out and it's just like, yep, this is straight up warfare. Straight up. And I'm here. So then I went to the word lunar. And I'll write that down. Hold on. Lunar. And I'll circle the first. All right, this is how I do anagrams, guys. So this is the word lunar, right? And when you flip N, L, U, N around in reverse, you get null. When you flip A, R around, just like solar, you get Ra, all right? So basically, when something is null and void, something is empty. So the, the, the reverse of what lunar is usually to us and what lunar usually is is like um it's a it's a it's a dream space more so and it's full of energy based upon imagination based upon creation and based upon uh pure potential so it's like the dark matter side of our power um and when it turns into null <laughs> Instead of a loon, lunar, it's null, it's empty of soul, Ra. So null of Ra, empty of soul. So the reason why this war is, is now declared in the cosmos through this eclipse um, is because of that, is because the, the, the true etherical energy, um, thank you, Crystal, for your Cash App donation. Um, the true uh, um, uh, reason behind this is because of the empty soul. Oh, Crystal, if you wanted a reading, um, five dollars is not enough. I'm sorry, I should have been I should have been clear on that, Crystal. It's usually for at least a twenty dollar donation and up, where you get like an actual reading from me. I'm so sorry about that. I'm not like hating on your contribution. I didn't know that you were going to share your birthday, Crystal. You can donate like 15 more dollars and you'll be good. I promise I give you a reading. I just didn't clarify. I'm sorry about that, but thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> so if I see you again, I'll, uh, I'll pull your birthday down and then go into your reading first. Um, <clears throat> but as I was saying, um, empty soul empty seaters uh empty vehicles just roaming around getting ran off by program program that is obsessed with um looping the past uh the easy route out uh the old masonic order that does not or is afraid of chaotic energy chaotic energy is usually summoned from the feminine energy we're going back to um back to the times of I, and I was even like somebody had a movie the uh, the movie Da Vinci Code on and I got up to the part where they were talking about Mary Magdalene and how there was a whole like order of free women that they were literally killing and drowning just for being free thinking women utilizing their natural power and a lot of this was through the order of Magdalene Mary Magdalene so Ma Mary Magdalene, it says that she actually had a gospel, a written gospel um, that is hidden, of course. But in this gospel, she was the chosen disciple over a male disciple under who we know as Yeshua or Jesus. 
Um, she was the chosen, the quote unquote favorite, the one that he was closest to. Also possibly his companion, which makes a lot of sense. His girl, <laughs> whatever, you know what I'm saying? They clearly had a very close relationship and she was very well versed in a lot of the etherical things and magic that Jesus was also into, right? So they were vibing and there was a jealous motherfucker that got upset like we got to get this girl this woman out we got to put her in her place so a lot of the spirit of the and of course they call them witches and eventually like burn them at the stake over generations but a lot of that fucking like feminine energy is coming back through that eclipse through that portal the portal of Ra, which allows truth to come through the door effortlessly um, so it's a door of resonance and these energies are back here and they're they're looking for their vehicles these spirits who that have been sleeping for a very long time again this has been 5,000 years um, these feminine spirits that have been sleeping or in in their state of non rest for the past 5,000 years they are out here flying <laughs> they're flying through the ethers looking for their vehicles, looking to reconnect with their feminine energies, um, specifically through feminine or female bodies. And that's also the other war, the other side of a war that I did mention. Um, in this space and time, we are politically correct about male-female dynamic. We, we like to say non-binary, no gender, it doesn't matter there's transsexuals people preferring to be identified as one thing when they're another we do have to be honest no matter what preference says that whatever your dna says you are you are so let's just say that identification versus spiritual connection to a dna receptor is two different things you can communicate and collaborate with this goddess energy but if you are a man if you have a man's body, you do not have a uterus, you do not have a womb, <laughs> you do not have the, 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 um, the X, X, all right? Um, then this means that you are collaborating with, you are not necessarily being embodied with. And there's a difference and there's no disrespect with that because you got to be paying attention to the masculine side that really needs to kind of like get into its zone as well this is my aunt so it does have to be balanced so if you are too feminine in a man's body there might be some super duper imbalance in your life i know you like it better i know you feel better in your feminine but sometimes you got to get into your space that your body needs versus what your mind and what your spirit and vibe is comfortable with. So I just wanna say that because um, a lot of the men, a lot of the biological men are supposed to be protecting a lot of the feminine bodies and they're not. They're trying to be the feminine bodies instead. That's a problem which what that does is it brings out the masculine energy in the female body. So when females feel unsafe around biological men, eventually over time, over decades, over decades, we have this angry feminist movement and shit where women hate men and all of this is because over time this happens. And now these women, they can't stand these motherfuckers and now they be, gotta become masculine which is not it is the it is the opposite it is turning that solar into the soul of ra within themselves so then that soul of ra is going to call into that female that is bitter and masculine and super hyper warrior in her space of trying to fight the soul of ra is trying to teach her how to love teach her how to love herself and how to love others how to fight through the power of love of real love and femininity and sensuality versus arguing <coughs> being combative right so the feminine energy if i'm around a certain masculine energy that always brings a combative side out of me that man is probably too feminine because i'm the responder 
So then I'm the one that has to get super in my masculine because the dude is too feminine around me when I need him to be masculine. So then I get combative and I don't like having to do that for myself because I'm in a space personally where I prefer to be more feminine. So like that, this is like, it's, it's, it's such a simple dynamic, but we've gotten caught up in all of these programs that we literally fucking forgot how to be simple or simplistic in our male and female energy. So it's like, it's, it's, it's so crazy, but it's, it's so necessary right now. Um, let me look in the comments. Female warrior energy. Um, uh, yeah, that energy is over exhausted right now. It's over exhausted. Like, ha uh, ha her root, I mean, um, Sekhmet, <laughs> the lioness, she's tired. Ra told her to calm down. At some point when she's drunk in too much blood and became too drunk in her battles, she gets really tired, she gets much weaker, and then her father, Ra, the eye of Ra, calls her in to rest. And this is what Ra is doing to his daughter, um, or with his daughter, uh, Sekhmet, and she has to rest and transform into her half herself. Um, exactly, somebody said, gotta get back to the basics. The basics are the strongest and the most powerful right now. Um, exactly, they need to be balanced, the masculine and the feminine, these men. Well, I mean, there's, there's a different type. You can tell the difference. Like, there's a lot of men that are really jealous of women, and they really wish that they were women. And then they have this authority within their masculine energy to overpower the woman and control the woman to make sure that she's not womanly anymore and they become the women instead. There's a war on that, all right? Um, so like, I don't, I don't rock with that energy, you know, that jealous energy of, of um, faggotry. Because we spoke about this on other videos, I'm not apologizing for saying the word, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. I don't, I don't fuck with faggots. I like my fellow people that do what they want sexually, I'm talking about faggots. The personality disorder of one. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop right here for a second. I'm going to see if anybody has any more um, donations to contribute to toward this very special conversation. Because um, <laughs> again, I do come here and I, um, I choose to do this for work. This is what I do. Like, I, I really go in and really stay connected and really express the message. So, um, yeah, I'll look into the comment section and, and just see. Um, yeah, donations, like just waiting on a, a few more actually, because I don't want to get too deep into the message if there's, again, no reciprocity. Um, I'm not arguing about it. I enjoy this. Um, but I'm, I'm being very closely, um, I'm closely just paying attention to the imbalances of things, you know, and right now it's a little imbalanced. <laughs> it's a little imbalanced right now. And there's so much like, um, again, going back to the birds, like the reason why birds are birds is because they've actually um, earned their way to that realm of air. Um, birds were all fish. <laughs> and they eventually got to the motherfucking air for a reason. So they're very special. And they do know how to simultaneously simulate experiences in different bodies. Um, so that's what the dove told me. And somehow I reminded the dove that it was able to do that, you know. Remove that. My lips are very lubricated. Um, <laughs> let's get these uh, disrespectful comments out of here.
Yep. If if there's no other donation, I'll just stop here. And I'm fine with that. I'm just seeing where I am here on this platform. Because I don't know, like... <clears throat> There's a whole other section which is very important and it has to do with the astral realm. The astral. The astral. But we can't get to the astral. We can't open up that portal until there's like some, some even shit going on. So. <clears throat> I'll give it a couple more minutes. You guys want to hear some music? Y'all wanna hear some music? I could play some of my music while we wait for another donation to come in. What you miss? Ah, well, I talked about the eclipse. Uh, I talked a lot about Egyptian uh, connection to the eclipse. Um, yeah, even during the eclipse, I actually had to switch eyes. I recognized that I was, my eyes were mixed up. My soul and moon were mixed up. And literally, in, in a moment during the fucking eclipse, like I literally, etherically and energetically took one eye out, took the other eye out, switched my eyes, adjusted my lenses, and was like, oh shit, my eyes were in the wrong fucking place. How dangerous is that? So, um, so yeah, pretty crazy. <clears throat> we can, we can, you want to hear me sing? Nah. I'll put on, I'll put something on. I'm actually quite thirsty. I wish I would have brought some water out here with me. Somebody, uh, you see my voice, my voice, my voice, my voice, my voice, my voice. My voice gets lost when it's not, when it's not um, uh, appreciated much. Uh, someone said you should be doing this from your heart, not to get paid. I am doing it from my heart and my heart needs to get paid. E <laughs> when you do something you love and you get paid well for it, you keep doing it. It's called incentive and it's called being in the human space and human body. Um, I do things from my heart, but like whoever pays attention to the heart, Thank you, Kayla, for your Cash App donation. We can definitely get rolling now. I appreciate you, Kayla. Oh, man. I'm wondering I should go get some water because I can't talk anymore. Um, is that your water? Um, flower, is that your water? I actually need water and I'm doing a live video. I don't want to like interrupt it. Do you mind? Thank you so much. Like I'm like, I'm, I have to talk and thank you so much. I will, whatever you, you need. Drink it? Huh? You drink it? Yeah. Oh, is my, uh, is mine? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Got some water. Oh my God. It makes such a big difference. <laughs> Shit. Um, okay. So let me see. Um, unique is your cash shop at Taryn Guy. Yes, it is. It is at Taryn Guy. So for those of you that are, before we go into the second half of the conversation, because I didn't want to cut it in half. <laughs> um, uh, yes, my cash app is Taryn Guy. My Venmo is Taryn Guy. My PayPal link is in the description. Um, you can also book an actual reading from me. And thank you, Cecilia, for your PayPal. I see you, thank you. Um, you can also book a reading um, because I do this as well when I'm not on video. Um, and you will have like a personal one-on-one uh, -on -one with each other. Um, so just to kind of like take a break and lead people to those links if they needed that. Um, the Cash App is also shared in the pinned comment in this comment section. 816 1996 I see you Isabella thank you I got you 816 1996 Woo! thank you um, yes Cecilia I received yours as well thank you so much all right so let's get into the second half of the conversation before we get into a couple of readings 
<laughs> I really needed some water. Shit. All right. Um, now, we are in April, and April is, this. we're in Aries right now, and of course, from the linear time calendar, um, or the Gregorian calendar, um, April is the fourth month fourth month right so we're already four months in so we think this is what i'm saying like there's a switcheroo going up here but you just got to read into the code so that you can unlock certain powers that most people won't have access to unless they understood deeply um because that's how you get got sometimes right so <laughs> april fourth month now of course looking into the anagram of april in the spelling of it i see libra right i'm gonna write this out i'm gonna write out the word april libra or libro libra isn't that doesn't that mean book books in spanish and habla espanol all right so april and libra right the p and the b kind of like are either flipped right side up or upside down depending right so april and libra so there's scales involved here once again we're going into the realm of ma'at into the realm realms of the scales since this eclipse since this eclipse what is an ancient cosmic 100 percent god energy eclipse this is judgment time and you could call it judgment day because the gods only see it as one day for them for us we shall never know when judgment ends for right now so it is judgment time right now like right now <laughs> um so i got that from april right being uh synonymous with Libra scale, okay, with the balance of that. Um, maybe that also means that into the actual season of Libra, which begins in September, uh, ends in October, um, around something major is going to happen around that time. If you are on the right side of it, you are going to feel good during this time. It's going to be a glorious time, a glorious coming into the fall at the end of this year, toward the end of this year, in the season of Libra. If you are on the wrong side, because there is a wrong side, there's a flipped side during judgment. It is black and white right now. Like there's no color spectrum shit going on with judgment. Judgment is literally black and white. Um, judgment does not go by the spectrum red orange uh fucking yellow and green and blue and blue and purple and green no judgment doesn't give a fuck about spectrum <laughs> all right <laughs> so um you, you light when you're supposed to be light are you heavy when you're supposed to be heavy all right so before i get into the next part of april and aries for this eclipse i want to thank you jamila for your cash app Love you, Jamila. Love you. Um, I want to really, really um, get this message out. Now, for those of you in certain orders, certain fraternities, certain societies, um, those of you who do understand the weighing of the scales, heart being weighed against the feather, um, and your heart shall be light as a feather to get through the doors of the afterlife, there's a difference. That is half truth. Um, there's something called Ma'ati. Thank you, Empress Delight, for your cash app. Um, there's something called Ma'ati. There's Ma'at and then there's Ma'ati. M-A-A-T-I. And what Ma'ati is, is the two truths. What is seen on the surface, written in the books, written in the the codes, the traditions that people read and learn. Yes, you must be light as a feather in order to fucking fly high, in order to be with the gods, and in order to cross through the portals into a true afterlife 
right? If you're heavy, your heart gets eaten by the Crocs. That's why people wear Crocs on their feet. They wear crocodiles. Um, however, if you are light when you are supposed to be heavy because you are uh, judging the heavy, the heavy side would be black. So while the light as a feather is white, the heavy is black. You can't be white all the time. You can't be light all the time. Sometimes, especially at night time, okay, at night, there's a, he <clears throat> there's a heaviness that is required of a person that is balanced to know when to go into accepting their heaviness and using their heaviness, which really means that good weight, that good weight. What is the good weight? It's anchoring weight. So when a ship or something huge needs to stop in motion, because if it doesn't stop in motion, it's gonna crash into a fucking iceberg or some shit. What do you need to let free and let loose and let sink down to the bottom? And it has to be heavy enough to do so. It's called an anchor. An anchor. <laughs> an anchor. Now, even when I'm saying that, I'm hearing encore. I'm hearing ankle, bottom, the feet. Before you get to the soles of the feet, you got to get to the anchor, the ankles. You need an anchor, right? That's what you need. And the anchor has to be heavy. It has to be, has to have some weight to it. What does weight come from? good weight bad weight is bullshit bad weight is garbage that needs to be recycled good weight is what experience wisdom intelligence intuition intuitive movement that's where the feminine energy actually fucking thrives this is why the ankh is a feminine symbol it's not the cross. The cross comes after the Ankh. Okay? The cross is an above symbol. It is a symbol of the air. True, like literally and figuratively. Like Jesus and cross. Like it's a symbol of the air. The Ankh is a symbol of the water. All right? So if you're supposed to be water when... When you're, supposed, when you're supposed to be water and you end up coming through as air, your shit is being judged and you're not. You're still thinking that you're doing things right when you're not. That's why the judgment flips. The judgment says, do you know how to compass yourself? Get a real compass. A real compass lets you know, okay, nope, it's time to, it's time to fly. Nope, it's time to be grounded. Nope, it's time to swim. Oh, now it's time to like set yourself on motherfucking fire. Oh, now, like, it's time to go, go through the elemental changes at the right timing. And that is a true master. That is a true God, goddess energy. A goddess that knows when to fly. Right? So all of that. So it's just like, that is, um, that is an important part. So a lot of the people that think that they all they have to do to pass these tests of judgment it's to be light as a feather 100% of the time. Ooh, that's kind of like, um, ooh, that's kind of like being over alkaline. You know how you over, people like go on these alkaline diets because they're too acidic, right? And then they over alkalize and then they get sick anyway because they got too much alkaline in their fucking body. Dude, you need some fucking acid. Get a little acidic. You cannot get rid of the acidic side of yourself. Know when to go acid and know when to go alkaline. Like, that's another um, uh, example of that shit. And this is, these are individual terms. These are individual passageways that have to conquer or at least um, bring into authority within one body. So what is also changed in this realm of the cosmic shifts because this is a real fool a real one is that you can no longer separate 
pieces of people saying, okay, this group over here is the air group or the light group. And this group of people over here are specifically for the heavy hitters, the heavy group, the black side, the other side. And then we're gonna use these people in how we usually do to create something specific. Those are called orders, secret societies. You got the black side and the white side, right? The uppers and the downers. Um, very special people come to the middle, right? But um, not anymore. You have to hold and harness the black and the white in one body, which gives you the authority to switch when you need to. And not everybody has that. And that's dangerous when a motherfucker is plotting on you or it actually protects you because you become unpredictable because you're going based upon the environment and you're more so responding instead of initiating. A true God goddess person, incarnated energetic God goddess person at whatever percentage, because we all have different degrees of that even as well. Um, you just recognize that all you have to do is initiate your path and your blueprint one time. You write it, you think it, you see it, you smell it, you feel it. You stamp it like a notary of approval and acceptance and you put the shit away. And from that point forward, now you're responding for the rest of your life. And the flow of response is the right side to be on for this cycle. The other side for the last cycle, it was the other way around. The, the energy of initiation, the offensive spirit was the dominant spirit and everybody had to respond to the offense. Everybody had to respond to these fucking laser people that constantly lasered new rules every fucking day. This time around, you write your own path, see it through, stamp it, and then live through, flow through, flow through your own responsive nature from what the fuck you wrote for yourself. But the question is, do you even have a pen? Because everybody can do it. The judges give you the authority to relax in a life of being able to do that. Everybody grab your pen, but you might have to write this shit down every day. You might have to write your shit down every five hours because you don't have enough power or you have no anchor to set and forget it. You have no anchor to do that because you haven't been working on the heavy side of yourself. You've been dissing it. You've been pushing it away. You've been treating it like shit. The very thing that gives you the pen to set, forget, and relax and flow and enjoy your fucking lifetimes because this fucking shit is going for another 5,000 years. Another 5,000 years, yo. So this is, some, this is a lifetime that you wanna pay attention to because or else you will fucking repeat the same lame fucking life for the next 5,000 years in whatever fucking body you choose to come in and you will feel the real time. You will get tired of yourself. <clears throat> And that might only be one or two lifetimes in. You got another few thousand years. You ain't going nowhere. You've already lived two and you're tired. That's because you, you, you didn't do, you didn't listen when you were supposed to. You didn't contribute when you could have. Why? Just like people put themselves on pedestals. Sometimes they lie about that shit. I am a real incarnated goddess. Okay, full blown, full blown like Lucy. But I'm trying to descend more into my human right now, but I have the authority. I'm not placing my authority over anyone else. I have my 100% authority over my life. That's what I'm saying. True goddess incarnated energy in this human body that has transformed 
over the past few years to get here. I am no one else's God or goddess. I am authority over myself, 100%. Now the question about this is from certain orders in the masculine side is, oh, this makes her manly. She's like a man now. She's less desirable. Our, def our way of fighting this bloomed energy is to make her feel less beautiful, is to make her feel like shit, too heavy, but too thin, not enough, but too much. Oh my, not enough, but too much. Which one is it? Uh, just, just, and, and, and manly, like, let's fuck around. Like, let's, let's get her in a combative mode where she's outside of her blooming, beautiful, restful goddess energy, her fun, loving goddess energy. And let's transfer this energy to other goddess, I mean, um, <coughs> other girls and give it out like money <laughs> instead of letting her harness it and distribute it in her own way because it's her personal fucking energy. And this goes to other goddesses, <coughs> other women out there that are really filling up in, the, in their goddess selves right now because I told you that Eclipse let everything through, all of that female fucking, all of those women that got killed for being who they were, they're back and they got bodies. They're only attracted and resonating to the real females, biological females that are able to accept them. And there's a certain percentage and you gotta work on that with yourself. I'm not here to give those rules because that would not be right. It's a, it's a personal journey, it's a development journey and it's beautiful, you know? So welcome to the goddess journey. So this is a cycle of the feminine energy. The cycle is in chaos, the cycle is in black, not white. The cycle is in chaos. So we are the actual authority for the next 5,000 years. And that is what it is. There are too many people that are scared of this. Too many people that wanna crush this. Too late, too late, you can't. You can't, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, but you know, a lot of people don't see themselves in this energy, so they attack it, or they try to kill it before it even comes out of the womb. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything <laughs> um, on what I'm saying? Anybody resonate? Anybody disagree? Like, let me know. Oh, um, also, somebody said stop speaking. I'll stop speaking when I'm ready to stop speaking. I know when to stop speaking. How about you stop watching? Um, one of the things that I also wanted to also bring up about this before I lose track is four, April 4, right? Is the four, fourth month. Aries, people forget this, is the first zodiac of the zodiac calendar the zodiac begins with aries i'll say that again for those that are really paying attention the zodiac begins with aries aries the first zodiac so we're not in four yet until we recognize that aries is the first that's where 14 comes in <clears throat> the magical golden phallus number of the egyptian mythology of finding the 14th piece of Osiris, the number 14. Let me write that down, why? Because we're in April 11th right now and the number 14 is included in that. Did I know this before I said it just now? Nope. I'm just flowing, I'm letting my goddess speak through me. All right, so I'm gonna write this down. We are in the 14 right now. People have been waiting for this, but this 14 has been captured for the right reasons this time. <clears throat> the 14th was supposed to be stolen. It was supposed to be stolen gold. The eclipse, if you kind of look at the eclipse 
Um, it's kind of like a pyramid capstone <clears throat> in full solidification. And whoever can grab that and steal that first and bottle it up in something nice and pretty, they fucking got the real shit. And nobody was able to steal it this time. <coughs> oh, we would have been fucked up <coughs> if this shit got into the wrong hands. I'll tell you. All right? So we got 14. So this one... This one is Aries, and this four is April. All right? So we're going Zodiac first. Aries is the god of what? The god of war. It is ruled by Mars. It is a warrior spirit god. That is the one. The sun is a warrior, which means that the true Haru or um, Horus or the horse, the true vehicle of the sun, of the son of the sun, Ra's son, Haru, the hawk eye motherfucker, is real this time. The one is real this fucking time. It's a real sun. Praise the sun gods. We have a real sun now. The sun is not toxic. That was one of the concerns that this daylight sun, literal sun, I'm talking cosmic energy that comes from all types of shit. That's another video too that I can make further down the line on where my perspective is on where the sun, how the sun actually keeps its light. We have a real sun now, which is beautiful. The real suns are here. And they all collaborate with the cosmic sun that is shining brightly with real light codes that actually affect the iris, the eyes that create the electrical circuit in the brain. So we're actually doing brain repair from fucking coronavirus right now. The crown virus, the eye virus is now being cured and corrected and repaired by the real sun. For certain people and there are others that must suffer deeper into the corona because the other side has to hold the balance of the bullshit if they were involved in bullshit and corona is not fun real corona is not fun cosmic corona is not fun it's not a good time you might snap but you're gonna have to deal with your mental fucking snapping for the next 5,000 years So once we understand the sun and acknowledge the sun, because you gotta acknowledge the sun first. And these goes out to this fucking toxic feminine ass bitches. These bitches out here that can't even see a sun to save their own fucking lives. They just looking for dick. I said it. We got bitches out here that's just looking for dick. They're looking for the 14, the golden phallus, Where's my dick? I need, I need dick. I just, I just care about dick. <laughs> and then they, they, they chew away the relationships that they should be nurturing with just men that just need to fucking talk to a bitch. Damn, like you, oh, I'm looking for dick. You're not my type, don't talk to me. Where's my dick? And you got this fine young man here that may not be your type for dick. But he's a friend. He's a person. He's a human being. He has resources to share. He has appreciation to share with you. The fuck? Fuck you, bitch. These sons no longer have to fucking need you anymore. And now it's reverse. And I love this shit because I hate these types of bitches. I hate them so much. Try not to let my segment come out. Can't stand these bitches. Now, in the, the eclipse was capped and held sacred in a true dynasty of the cosmos. These bitches are gonna get fucked up because they need the sun now. 
in order to get their dick <laughs> and just in order to be comfortable in their lives they need the sons they need the harus and the haru the real fucking sons know <clears throat> was real and was not so good luck with that right good luck with that anyway that was a side thing sidebar um <coughs> they ain't get through trust me and they're not going to get through they get nothing they get nothing next um let's go to the astral now so april being the fourth month month April being the fourth month and the first in Zodiac gives it not the heart. So motherfuckers have been going through the chakra points. This is how, this is their only map. Even the highest of the high secret society motherfuckers or like the arrogant masons, the ones that are kind of like, eh. they've been looking in this, the numbers system and they're just like, four is the heart. We don't give a fuck about the heart. We all all know how we feel about the heart. God damn. Ooh, yeah, we trade in the heart. The heart is a sacrificial uh, organ. It's a sacrificial entity. The heart is always sacrificed. Even in the Aztecs, they fucking ripped your heart out and threw that shit down the motherfucking pyramids and fucking cut your head off and threw that shit down too. The heart is not a good sign in the occult the heart is if you are associated with the heart you are up for sacrifice your likeness is up for sacrifice your your you may literally be up for sacrifice so many different layers of the sacrificial part of being associated with the heart that's why i made the video of the wild heart for the last video because i said <clears throat> my heart the way my heart operates is connected to the jupiter <laughs> The motherfucking planet, Jupiter. You you ain't fucking with my heart like that. It, it cannot be put up in place for something like that. So shout out to all of the real Jupiterians out there because you know who you are. Um, so for, for April, people think that this is like a, a time of like ritual and... Um, uh, working towards the sacrifice of whomever. <coughs> there was a sign of sacrifice. There's a couple of signs. Um, the actor Chance. I forgot his name. Chance. Predu What's his name? Can somebody type his name in? The actor that just died on a motorcycle accident. He was. He died of an accident. They and and one of the things that I noticed in the media is how when they announce someone's death, um, how they do it. Hold on, Chance. His name is Chance Perdomo. Chance Perdomo. He was such an amazing actor. He, he played in Sabrina the Teenage Witch. He played in a lot of witch warlock shows. He played in Gen V, I believe, which is really good. I was watching that and I was like, I couldn't wait for the next season. Um, <clears throat> hold on, I'm, I'm gonna pull up this image. Because Chance, whoever named him is a genius, was a genius, they're geniuses. Because his name actually harnesses power in the word chance. So now when you say the word chance, his spirit is actually connected to it because he was actually a, he was connected to something I should say that I feel, <coughs> I never speak on anyone else's spirit in such a way that as a matter of fact, But I feel that it was an untimely death for him. He wasn't supposed to die. Which picture, Chance? Which picture do you want them to see of you? This one? Him. Age 27 motorcycle accident <clears throat> they keep saying chance he, they keep saying that he passed away 
He didn't pass away. He was in a motorcycle accident. There's a difference. When a person passes away, that means that they were all so slightly on a deathbed and slowly but surely their life was passing and passing and passing and passing. No, an impact motorcycle accident is death on impact. Even if he did go to the hospital and he passed away at the hospital, he was in a motorcycle accident and it was, it was not a rightful death. Now what happens when people like Chance, who plays in likeness type movies of his own entity, such as witches and warlocks and superhero villain shit, which means that he actually had power and authority. An untimely death for a person like that or an entity like that definitely moves the scales. And that shit was out of balance and that there's a payment for that. Anytime there's a wrongful death, there's a payment for that wrongful death. It has to balance itself out during things and cosmic events like eclipses. Because if the shit is not balanced out or paid in full, then somebody is gonna get the wrath of Ra for a very long time. And it's a certain group and type of people. It's not just one person, but it can start with one person being made a fool of or being made an example, the next sacrifice. Because there will be a next sacrifice, but it'll be on the other side of sacrifice. It'll be Ra's sacrifice. So, um, you know, unfortunately that happened. So, going back to, um, and I think today, what, today O.J. Simpson died? And he died of prostate cancer, didn't he? R.I.P. to O.J. Simpson. He died at the age of 76. Um, no one knew that he was suffering from prostate cancer. Um, I believe he was living in a hospice or he was in a hospice or he was surrounded by family when he died. Alchemy of Life, thank you for pointing that out. See, someone said prostate and the number 14. 14 is the number of the penis, the number of the phallus, the 14th piece. Thank you, you guys, I love you guys so much. To all my people, to all my real spirit family that's really hearing me and feeling me, you don't have to agree with everything I'm saying, but you understand on a level where you, we, just, we just go back and forth in a way that makes more layers, that makes more sense. So prostate, prostate is associated with the genitals of a man. The balls, the penis, that whole area down there. And that's crazy because last time it was the colon. It unflipped, flipped around, flip, flip. It's, it's attacking the neck, Ra is attacking the, the penis. There's either a, a, a renewal, a renewal of the penis, or re, because that is a, that is a, um, that's a magic wand, okay? We need to have that renewed and blossomed because there's been a lot of men, biological men, that have lost their penis. And when I say that, it's not, it's, it's the, the, the story in the mythology is his the set came and chopped that shit off. But no, the etherical attack, meaning that nothing turns them on in life anymore. No inspiration, no real women, no real sensuality, sexuality around. Um, exhaustion in old relationships, marriages that need to end. From the male point of view, a lot of men feel like they're being held hostage in a lot of their fucking situations because these toxic fucking women are horrible. They're horrible and don't worry, there's a, there's a, there's a day for them. So a lot of men, they become asexual. They've lost everything. They can't even get it up. Erectile defunct, like dysfunction, like whatever you call it, like they can't, it, it doesn't work anymore because 
they're not surrounded by the beauty of real feminine energy or real sexual energy, I should say too, because that includes male, female energy. That includes dark energy and light energy. That includes love and lust. That includes heaven and hell. To get the penis hard, it includes the angels and the demon. So it's like, and then there's a little bit more than the other. You need more demonic energy than angelic energy when it comes to sex, when it comes to getting the penis hard. You have to be more demonic. You can't be half and half. Everything is not 50-50. The scale does not want to be equal all the time. It just needs to be equal for portals to open and align perfectly for motherfucking angels and demons to get through. Other than that, once motherfuckers are through, the scales have to start tipping again. Because that's what scales are for. Scales are for that. How can you weigh something that always weighs the fucking same? The reason why you need a scale is you need to check in and see where we're at. Oh, for sex and for the number 14, we definitely need to be more on the demonic side of things, on the darker side of things, on the heavy side of things. So motherfuckers that are here, you're supposed to be here, the black square. You're supposed to be in the anchor. You're supposed to be deep in that motherfucking ocean with Satan. I mean, I'm sorry. With the darkness. That's where it is. And if you're scared of that, you got your school time coming. You got your fucking lessons coming in the orange. All right? Spend time with that. That's not my job. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So um, when you notice that certain people in the media, certain celebrities, certain stars... Certain people die in certain ways during certain times. Um, and both just happen to be in April. Um, there's like a, a warning to those that can read into the number four. Read into the astral realm. This is where I was getting. I'm coming back full circle. I would also, I'm going to take this time out to reiterate that if you are appreciating my messages, this message today and you would like to get paid forward in your paying forward, feel free to donate to my cash app, which is at Taryn Guy, Venmo Taryn Guy, PayPal link in a description, book a reading in a description, but you know, um, all of that is there and very much appreciated. Okay. Um, the astral realm has to deal with the number four. It is the fourth dimensional perspective that is above the third dimension, right? Anything that happens in the astral automatically happens in the three. It automatically happens in the third. The third has no control. This is where we're coming into the simulation, the Sims. Welcome to the Sims world, okay? If you are in the Sims world, you have no control over your narrative. People in the four, the lowest realm to the, re to, the, to the game of life, the lowest of the low, the last motherfucking lowest of the low cloud, the lowest cloud in the sky is the fourth dimension. And there are people that are masters of the four. They're masters of the fourth dimension. They, they know how to manipulate the fourth dimension so well. And this is where we come into... I, I think I made this video a while ago when I was talking about John Wick. I still have my dreads too. I was talking about the astral war and the fucking astral assassin shit. Um, the first uh, track on my album is called Jane Wick. With two eyes. And then I said... I was really getting deep. I was like, wait, wait, wait. The word wick. Okay, let's talk about it. Wick. Wick is what? The, the string, that string on a candle that you have to burn, right? You got to light the wick in order for the candle to burn 
and in order for the wax to start melting, right? The, the, it, it is the very thing that you need to light a fucking candle. You need a wick. So the question is, is the wick sacrificial or is the wick being phoenixed and burned into life? Because you were talking about a flame, like a twin flame, a sexual flame, a, a cosmic fucking orange flame that like, oh my God, I'm on fire flame because I'm so in love and in so turned on with my life type flame. That kind of wick is a great wick. Then you got the other wick, like a John Wick, the character John Wick, that is constantly fighting for his life. He's not fucking for his life. He's fighting for his life instead. So this motherfucker is fighting and he getting stabbed at, shot at. He's fighting, gotta go up the fucking stairs and then fucking falls down the whole stairs and he's almost late to his appointment to death. Oh my God, what a life. That's the other side of being lit the fuck up. Being lit. Litty, litty, that's where the clips, the clips, clips, clips come in. Broop, 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 broop. That's a different kind of firearm. That's a firearm. <laughs> um, that's the other one. So th there's two sides to this shit too. The wick. Also the wiccan. The wiccan. We clearly know the witchcraft. The witchcraft is so strong in the fourth dimension. This is where goddess, they feel goddess energy gets weak, weakened. The goddess energy gets weakened within the wick phase. The witches are stronger than the goddesses. They're like, bitch, come down from your sixth dimension with your Cleopatra and your Egyptian fucking feather ma'at onk shit. <laughs> your royal bullshit. And wait until the feather floats down. Oh, we're at number five, and now let's get into four. Hi, bitch. Welcome to the realms of the witches. Or the bitches, or the witches, and the bitches, and the wiccans, and the wicked, and the wicked. And they, you know, they're just like, goddess energy is not as powerful down here. Because why? Because there's more of us. And we're a group and we work together like a sisterhood. And goddesses like to work alone. Goddesses think that they're special. Witches never feel special, so they need each other to make things happen. Oh, is that the issue? Really? Word? All right, so welcome to the fourth dimension, bitch. I'm here. I'm here. Now, there's a war in the feminine world between the witches and the goddesses. Goddesses. Because what they don't know is that their fourth that they think they rule is a negative four. Because if a goddess like me is balanced 360, then bitch, I'm coming from the bottom for you. I'm not descending from the top. You're waiting for me to fucking fall. Bitch, you got my aftermath. By the time you got it, I already did what I needed to do from the motherfucking bottom, bitch. Witch. Is that the game you want to play? Who's more satanic now? Bitch, I came up from hell under you, which is more powerful than your fucking little dark energy that you're fucking with. And on top of that, my dark energy is actually more powerful only because it's more pure. It's pure dark. It's not manipulative dark. 
Now you guys need to exist because you make things fun and interesting, but when it's too many of you motherfuckers, some of you have to die. Some of you have to go. There are rules and orders and cubes that are being set up that are placing you motherfuckers in cells so that you can't do any more of your shit. You're being quarantined. And we'll wait for the real dark goddesses to also come up from the bottom because there's not a lot of us down there. A lot of people think that it's smelly down there and that it's like too evil. You know, there's not a lot of female energy that can come up from hell, okay? So I always say a motherfucker that has sent you to hell, told you to go to hell, and then you went to hell and made hell your home, how the fuck can you get mad at me now? Because hell became my home. You sent me there, remember? With your wicked witch shit. You sent me to motherfucking hell. Therefore, I made it my heaven. Therefore, I was crowned there too. Oh my God. I was crowned in hell. Fuck with me. And when I say me, I'm speaking for a group because I don't work alone. I do recognize my other fellow goddesses. I don't judge a witch that calls herself a witch. I don't judge a woman that is studying and developing in her power to manipulate and become godlike. So no, I am not at war with witches. I'm not at war, I'm not at war with anybody. I'm just being myself. I'm just not a witch. So there are witches out there that I might need on my side that are fighting for the greater good of love and, se and real sex and flame and feel good shit. I want those motherfucking witches on my side. Yes, bitch. I don't know how to do what you do, nor do I want to. Nor do I want to. Do you while I do my thing because my thing is my thing. And that's the whole beautiful part about it, you know? So like, welcome to the four, welcome to the four, welcome to the four, it's the astral realm. So now we're here, we're even, right? So this is April, welcome to April. The one four, the first, the Aries, April, Aries four, one four door. So I'm, I'm gonna stop here. Um, I don't know if anybody wanted like, uh, wanted me to do a reading on them. Um, before I go, I just, you know, asked for $20 or more in donations with your birthday in the thing that you send. Um, and I'll go ahead and read your birthday. Um, if not, then I'll probably just end the video. But yeah, this is what I had to say about um, the big event <laughs> um, that did resonate with me. Someone said, we can smell originals. Okay, so can I. And they smell really good. They smell really good. Girl, you change stories every time. I'm not changing stories. I have to, maybe that is manipulation, right? I kind of twist words and stories around and perspective around to make things fit and feel right to me, possibly, storyteller. But I do have a pen so I can do that. You know what I'm saying? I do have an authoritative written and spoken language um, that, I, that I exercise um, because I am trusted with my word um, in my storytelling. And I know that for a fact. Um, so, you know, some stories do need to be changed unless we want to keep telling the same stories over and over again. And this is where we create these loops and we got to figure out like, why are the same people always winning and the same people always feel like they're losing and the losers don't really deserve to be in that cycle anymore. They actually, it's time for them to rise and bloom into their power. Um... <sighs> uh i would like a reading let me send it to you okay so infinity x x r l b 
Um, I'll just wait for your donation to come in and just don't forget to put your birthday in there and I'll go ahead and do your reading. I'll wait for you. <laughs> I still have battery in my phone. And I just want to thank everybody for like just showing love as usual. Again, you know, I know I got to live in a human world. I need income. I, I you know, I'm, I'm still trying to like go out there and figure out this whole work thing. I am in a space where I am settled enough in to get my life together. And it's, it's working for me so far. And I'm very thankful for having a roof over my head finally and um, going into the workspace eventually. Um, more so like this month, next month. And continuing to do this, something that I love to do anyway. And also getting contributions from this so you know I'm just kind of like just making sure I just have to do what I need to do regardless um, oh my goodness it's 6 36 Pacific Standard Time 6 7 8 9 I know it's 9 30 9 36 Eastern Yes, I'm still here in Los Angeles. Still here in LA. <laughs> um, and again, if you, you can totally get a private uh, reading um, by clicking the link in my description box, description area. Um, gotta watch what we say with our words sometimes, you know? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, it's called, uh, ah, Rishali, uh, 10, 12, 1991. Thank you, Rakali or Rachel. I hope I'm saying your name right. 10, 12. Um, let me see. Hold on. Let me make sure that I got back. I was just making sure that I got the year from that birthday, 1991. 1991 okay um let's look into these numbers um let me write this down on a separate piece of paper 10 12 1991 all right let me just get the life path this is three four um 10 plus 9 29 then one 30 so that is three so that's a seven so a life path is seven all right so we have a beautiful phantom birthday yet again october is associated with january you guys know how i do with that if you've been watching me for a while with these numerology readings um so october and january are kind of like the similar resonance um one is january 10 is october so 10 and 1 still kind of resonate in similar frequency when i say phantom birthday i mean you can actually look into your energy for january 12th as well you can look into 112 and 10 12 which 112 would be capricorn and your 10 12 is libra so the question is are you more so in your capricorn energy or your libra energy I'm going to go ahead and say Capricorn because, no, Ooh, I'm going to go ahead and say Libra because as April, um, April, the P in April, I flipped it upside down, turned it into a B. Uh, <clears throat> this is Libra time, Libra talk. So you're in your element in your 1012 right now. Also, there's a lot of flipping. Um, I'm seeing 1021 as well 12 and 21 um there's a there's an issue it's interesting that i say capricorn first um there's an issue with past traumas from your teenage self um i don't know there's something if there's something that you went through or that were you were constantly going through as like a teenager around the age of 12 possibly um, I'm seeing like age, 12 being an age, 11, 12, 13 years old, um, where it was very, very traumatic for you. Um, the goal 
is to not allow there are certain um frequencies that bring or dig this back up for you to constantly feel like this 12 year old over and over and over again as much as you can um your libra right is a scale that readjusts in order for to feel a comfort or familiarity so your your libra scale is okay with familiar trauma your libra does not fight libra trauma it is not the leo it is the libra it is saying oh i'm holding space for this again because i'm a scale and i'm supposed to so what i'm saying is what you can do is flip it around and go into your 21 self there's something that i said about 21 where it is like an age marking but it's not just about human age like hey i'm 21 years old i can finally drink i can finally do things go to clubs i'm 21 and older there's a reason why 21 is seen as that age as a stamp or a marker for passageway into a space that is held for adults your adult self is claiming the 21 side of you and comforting and putting to rest the 12 side of you if you flip 10 if you flip it into 10 21 that brings you to the cusp of libra scorpio now so now you're being like pushed you're they're like you were brought to capricorn brought back to libra now you're being pushed further into libra closer to scorpio so closer to scorpio which is water so now you have earth you have air and now you're being pushed towards the fucking water and we are in fire right now we are in aries so we have gathered the four elements just from your birthday richali if i'm saying your name correctly just from your birthday wow this is magical thank you amazing so closer to Scorpio. Um, also with your, um, with your life path being a seven, um, you being a Libra, and I know, and I'm assuming that you're female. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm looking at how I wrote this down because that also matters, four and three. Um, yeah, the 12 is made, you, your heart would be considered heavy. Um, <clears throat> when that happens, the seven is supposedly the crown. The crown kind of sinks into a space and kind of disappears. It's like somebody taking your crown, like literally cutting your head off. Chop, chop, cut. An attempt to cut your head off, an attempt off with your head it hasn't happened and it won't so long as you understand that you have the ability to grow and glow in your authority you are still a child which allows you to grow and you are a beautiful adult so you are allowed to glow you're allowed to be seen you are allowed to be heard you are allowed to <clears throat> make decisions. You are allowed to say yes or no to certain things. You are allowed to make choices and have options in your life like an adult. However, always remember that you are always a child of God. And when we remember that child of God does not mean child of my parents. That's different. You are not a child of your parents anymore whatever you've been through with your parents i'm not sure if you would like to book a personal session with me and validate something or confirm something with me you can just send me an email at taranguy at gmail.com we can set something up um for a longer session because i do have questions now but like always remember this out of everything is that a child of god is in a it's 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 a growing entity that is full grown enough to see themselves as a child of God. Therefore, you can never grow old of this life. <clears throat> this is how I see myself as well. I'm a child of God. <clears throat> there are people that slip up and I know they're being nice about it. They call me queen. 
I see a lot of birthdays in the in the comment section. I'm doing it based on donation though, guys. <clears throat> of course, I'm doing it based on donation. Like I see the birthdays, but if you would like to like have a reading right like here, twenty dollars or more we get you there. <laughs> um, or a booking with a session, a booking of a private session with me, which the link is in the description. Um what was I saying? Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Like, um, knowing that I, oh, I was saying that sometimes when people like say, hey, queen, or you're so beautiful, queen, or they use the word queen, there's a, there's a, there's a trigger. That's like a, a small gun <clears throat> that um, sets something off in my DNA that rejects that, that always says, I'm nobody's queen. I hate the word queen, actually. I don't like the word queen. It doesn't resonate with me. <clears throat> the word queen makes me feel old. It makes me feel like I'm in a seat that separates me from my personal life. I don't want to be anyone's queen <clears throat> ever again. So therefore, my God or God has honored that request and said, you will you shall never be. At least within the next cycle, you shall never be queen. You're correct. You are now a child and will always be a child of God in a way that is princess-like. The princess always gets to live. The queen always dies. The princess gets to dot, dot, dot. I don't know who's writing that story. Is it Disney or is it me? I also have a song that I didn't put on my album. It's called Dark, Pri Dark Princess. <laughs> Dark Princess. You know? And when I'm a real royal child of God, the whole God, I'm talking about Sky Daddy and Under Daddy. Hell Hole and Heaven Hole. <laughs> Daddy. God. It's just one. But sometimes they, they appear as two depending on the situation. But the thing is, from all angles, this is what I am recognized as. You know, so um, it's a beautiful privilege, I should say. And it allows me to continue to be intelligent, to not have to play stupid or dumb or a girl that doesn't know anything. And that just needs to be pretty, you know? And talk like this all the time, <laughs> just to be considered young and youthful and relevant. I get to talk my shit because my God, me being a child of my God, loves it when I talk shit when I'm supposed to. And then the other side of my God loves it when I lighten up. I'm just writing this down. Thank you, Nephi, for your for your um for your contribution. I see your birthday. I got you. And my other god, my, my my other god, my lighter side of my god loves it when I lighten up. And I don't have to say much. And I can just take a deep breath and rest and dance and have fun and be a girl until I have to talk shit again. But trust and believe I ain't fighting no battles because that's what the warriors are here for. Praise to the warriors, the real ones. <laughs> um, so I did get another donation from Nephi and let me just write your full birthday out here for a second. Um, no. Six four. Six four. That's June fourth. I have to think about that for a second. Um that equals ten nineteen ninety two. Life path. Okay. June 4th, that's Gemini. 
Um, hold on for a second, Nephi. I don't know why I'm not seeing the four here. And I don't know why it's trying to turn into a nine. Nephi. It's funny because I spoke about Nefertiti and Cleopatra earlier and the difference between the two likenesses. Your name is Nephi. I spoke about Nefertiti. Nefertiti. Um, her issue was um, being mother, queen, queen, mother, pharaoh, being everything for everyone all the time. Um, she wasn't, it's not that she didn't have sons, but she wasn't allowed to have sons. Um, she did, did have sons. She just wasn't allowed to have sons, if you understand what I'm saying. And I don't know. I know you, you're Nephi, not Nefertiti. I'm not placing this. This is just a story rolling through. Because I look based upon how I write the birthdays down. It's not just digital. And I don't know if your issue is kind of like that. Like, um, Nephi, that people, when you're trying to be in your vibe, in your zone, that other people are constantly trying to place you in the 6-9 part of yourself, which is the mother part of yourself. This has been another war against specific type of feminine energies that have done or have paid forward in the cycle of mothering and nurturing others in the name of sacrifice sometimes, in the name of discomfort sometimes, in the name of early death sometimes. And right now, if this is an issue for you, whether you have men around you that do this, whether you have, Nephi, I see, um, whether you have men around you that do this, um, born on my mom's birthday, nine is my lucky number. Oh, you were born on your mother's birthday, Nephi. She just sent me a dollar cash app extra just to tell me that. Wow. See, so I was picking up mother energy you are confirming that you were born on your mother's birthday. So there has to be a separation in likeness or not, because you said nine is your lucky number. So now, again, if this is an energy that does not bring trauma to your life and actually brings um, the other kind of balance to your life, the wisdom balance into your life, being born on your mother's birthday is very special. Just ask yourself, am I okay in this stage or in this space? Or do I want to be nurtured more? Can you afford to nurture? Because the question is, can you afford to give, give, give? Or is it time for you to actually be nurtured? You needing a 69 figure. You needing that from a feminine energy or a masculine energy, just that energy in general. Do you need to be nurtured and taken care of? There are a lot of people that have nurtured so much that they've run dry. And that's why they kill themselves as queens and kings. And they just say, you know what? I got to be prince or princess right now. Where the fuck is my God? Where's my dad? Where's my mom? Where's somebody, motherfucker? Where's my goddess? I need help. Please, I've been doing it for so long. Or when you've been well rested enough which is kind of like an accumulation of wealth as well, you're like, wow, I can actually be in this nurturing mode because I've rested in myself enough to have enough energy to properly fucking do it. And it's something that I enjoy doing. Um, so that's a beautiful thing. People get afraid of the number 69 too. It's not, not in the sexual way. We're not talking about sexual positions. We're talking about 69 being associated with the um the sign of cancer so if we want to play around with sexual terms we can always take it back to the dick because somebody did die from prostate cancer today i don't know who i'm talking to but i'm talking to a disrespectful energy that is not like is just taken into another space and it's not necessary um <laughs> Nephi, I see you sent something else, unless you have another daughter. Your daughter died at age four. You're spot on. First of all, I am so sorry that you have experienced that. I am so sorry, and I never say sorry to 
people who tell me that people pass away because I am so sorry that you had to experience losing a child at the and she was only four years old. First of all, when I was when I wrote your birthday down, I could not see the four. I can show you right here because I scribble. This is how I wrote your birthday down. This is how I wrote your name. And you see what this four looks like? It, that's what I was saying. I was reading into my handwriting more so, and it looked like a nine, and I kept going to that, but I said, I can't see the four. And I can now spiritually understand why I couldn't see the four is because your four left. Your daughter at four is not here, which is why I can't see four in your birthday. I couldn't see, I can't see her. This is very powerful. Wow. Um, you don't have to send me any more cash apps to send me any messages. I would love to talk to you. Please just email me at Nephi, email me at TarenGuy at gmail.com. And like, whatever it is you want to tell me, even in the email, just go ahead. Like, we don't even, you don't have to keep doing that just for that. Um, and like, we could just take things from there because I'm seeing that it's going deeper and now you're daughter who has passed away is is now coming up um so like you can email me or if you feel that you want to you can also simply just book a session with me just for actually having something scheduled and with time so it's up to you i'm just opening the door for you to just communicate with me um after telling me this um but your life path is four so i guess we can just stop right here it ends with four so when we talk again nephi let's see where it begins now since your four is associated with death thank you for that nephi really appreciate you um wow um i think i'm gonna stop here um <laughs> There's a lot that was expressed on this video. So if you didn't see all of it, you can definitely uh, watch the replay. Um, it was really going into the eclipse, the energy of that. And then we kind of like moved on to other subjects. Um, but, huh? No, 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 I'm about to get off. Yeah, yeah, yep. Oh, good. Yeah, no, I'm off in like five minutes. Okay, nice, nice. So, um, so yeah, I'm about to head off. Um, it was always, well, it's always good talking to you guys. Um, and for me to bring out crystals, you guys know that I never even deal with crystals anymore. But these, I don't know, like certain totems and tangibles of the elements are calling me back little by little. And I'm just honoring that. So um, anyway. I love you guys so much. Again, um, sentientnumerology.com. All links are in the description, uh, as well as any links of contribution also in the description. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.